we are back right here at the Spa Deck Arena. Hello, Vashu. Hello, interesting fellow. So, Vashu, um, this is Vashu, guys. Give a round of applause to Vashu. He's been hyping you guys throughout. Okay, so, uh, Vashu, um, what we're going to be doing uh, is we're going to be giving away this uh, Intel uh, 5 Series SSD, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out a way to do this. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to pick one person, you're going to pick one person to come here on stage to battle, okay? What kind of battle? What kind of battle? Um, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Just fist fight? Just throw headphones at each other, maybe? I don't know. Maybe not fist fight. Let's do the rock, paper, scissor. I like that. You guys want to do some... Who wants to play rock, paper, scissors for this beautiful piece of... Look at the hype. I can feel it. All right. So here's what we do. You pick, you pick someone first, and I'm going to pick the next person, okay? Pick your poison, buddy. Go ahead. Just, just pick someone in the crowd, okay? Here we go. This is going to get emotional right here. I've got this one guy there, the shirt. Yes, you man. He looks like like next rock, paper, scissor legend. That's right. Hello, sir. Um, I'm sorry, sir. It was the guy behind you, but I, I'm sorry that that was really hard. He was just walking, but it was this guy. Sorry, you're really tall. It's 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 understandable. All right. So okay, we got we got a secret. We got a secret jersey here. I like that. Okay. Hello. Wait. I can't shake your hand. You're my enemy. Okay. Here we go. Wait. I need, let's, let's get someone in Na'vi, because uh, I see a few Na'vi. Na okay, anyone who, re who needs, who actually needs an SSD? Who, who does? Who actually needs one? Who actually really, really needs one? Just wave really, like, you really need this? You really, really need, th right? That's, okay, okay, you, sir, come here. Yeah, you're just really, yes, yes, you, you're, no, no, sir, sir, I'm so sorry. It's the one behind you up there, sorry. Come, come here. Yes, he was, wait, he was really... It was looking like, yes, come on, yes, you, sir, come on. It, he was waving violently. It's like the security were worried. Okay, come down, sir. Here you go. He, was, he really needs this. Okay, so we're going to just do some quick rock, paper, scissors. Not bad. That's a pretty good deal for an SSD, okay? Best of five? Best of five, yeah. Best of five, just like a grand final. Okay, here we go. So again, rock, paper, scissors, best of five. Whoever wins will be taking home this beautiful piece right here. Hello, sir. What's your name, man? Patrick. Patrick, come here. You see this guy right here in secret jersey? Okay, that, that's your enemy, okay? No mercy, all right? I don't want you to hesitate. I want to give this to you. you. Have you played rock, paper, scissors before? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, you, you did. Okay, here we go. So you know how it is, all right? So three, two, one, okay? Yeah. You ready? Okay, are we ready to do this, Kato? That's a lot of hype for rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Fist in front, please. What's that? What's that? Yeah, I'm really stressed about this. I you, feel like I'm gonna do something wrong. Don't get violent because we have security here, okay? okay. All right, just like, okay, look at the guards. Like, I'm really stressed. Okay, here we go. Anything you wanna say to this person before we move on? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Do you feel the disrespect coming from his mouth right now? God, what do you want to say back? Uh, I don't know, mate. You're not worth his words. Oh, my God. The violence from these two. Okay, here we go. Fist in front. In three, two, one. Here we go. Oh, my God. Secret. Take one. All right. I want you to just believe in yourself, okay? This is life-changing, all right? Okay. The seconds you'll be saving from booting that computer is just, just so much, okay? All right, visualize. Do you have friends here? Yeah, I'm visualizing how it is, yeah. Okay, all right, remember what you did and try to do it differently. Here we go. All right, fist in front. In three, two, one, here we go! Oh, there you go, that's what you do! That's what you do. Okay, it's 1-1. One, one. You've healed it up. All right, well done. Well done. Just keep losing. That's great. Okay, here we go. This this my boy. Tell him something. I'm trying to motivate my guy. But my guy, look at him. Look at him. 
He's tall, handsome. Look at these biceps, like Pasha. It will be a great game. This win go for me and him. I didn't feel that. I don't think he's motivated. Here we go. Fist in front, ladies and gentlemen. In three, two, one, hit, wait, go! Oh my God, that's a beautiful tie. The strength is just at the same level right now. Okay, three, two, one, here we go! Oh my God. It's just an amazing fist fight back and forth, my God. Okay, three, two, one, come on! Oh, oh, the paper! <laughs> you, you, you did stone three times. I know. I kind of got blocked on, like, the stone is the best, you know? Like, it's so tough. So yeah, he, tough. Just, he just, like, you know what, stone, okay, here we go. You gotta come back, man. All right. All right. All right. You are one step away from winning this. Here we go. Fist in front. In three, two, one. Here we go. Oh, the papers. Three, two, one. Come on. Oh, the scissor goes to the paper. We go to a game five. This is what you wanted. Okay. You are one step away. This is the comeback that you wanted. Do you have family or friends here? Uh, yeah. I got two mates with me. Two, two mates? Yeah. All right, here we go. Just put them in your heart. All right, think of your mother. Here we go. Harry, one word to my player. Yeah. Think what I would do and don't do that. Okay. All right, you know exactly what that means. Fist in front. This is for the win, the SSD. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the tension is mounting. Ladies and gentlemen, the final in three, Two, one, come on! Oh, the scissor in the scissor. You look disappointed that was a draw. You're getting to him, okay? Here we go. Fist in front. In three, for the SSD. Two, one, come on! What? Well, look at the misdirection. I like that. Let's look. He's flush. What? I saw stone and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna beat the stone. Yeah. That's right. I know, but you just gotta wait for three. Okay, gotta wait for three. Okay, three, two, one. For the win. In three, two, one. Come on! Oh, oh my god! Yeah. Why is Secret taking everything right now? Okay, you fought well. You really fought well. Congratulations. You took it to a game five. Sir, you have won. Why don't you raise it up in front of everyone? Come on, just like the Lion King. There you go. There you go. The winner of the N Intel SSD 5 Series, congratulations, Secret continuing to show their dominance for ESL1 Katowice. Congratulations, man. Take that home, enjoy it. And ladies and gentlemen, up next, we have our final series of the night, Fnatic versus OG. Vodafone presents the pre-match. Yes, indeed, we do have our final series of the night. I think that's probably the closest anyone's going to get to Secret all weekend, and they'll probably have to play Rock, Paper, Scissors in the best of five to get that close. Uh, we're going to move into the lower bracket right now, where two teams have made themselves top four contenders, but they do want a shot at Gambit in the lower bracket final. OG versus Fnatic is our matchup. We've had a little change here on the desk. We welcome back Blitz and Fogged alongside Nahaz for the final time. Gents, um, I, I kind of like the look of this on paper. Stop winking at each other. What? What are you doing? How's that will? Not at you. It's just flirty. Relax. <laughs> Is it you flirting? Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just not used to you two flirting. That's it's not, not what you we mean cat. by banter, guys. Mm. No. Well, Kyle's gone, so you know a lot of more happiness is brought to this panel. Wow. What? Certainly wow. on this end of the panel. Wow. I mean, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, I don't know. Uh, OG fanatic. Is it? Is it as hype as I feel it, it should be? Because they feel. I feel like they're kind of closely matched. I feel like we had a repeat of. Uh, like the last night series that I casted, the OG NIP felt like the series that I casted of Fnatic Mineski this morning. Right. It was exactly kind of the same thing. First game was kind of stop. Could be one side way, and then one way, and then the other side. Two zero, yeah. two zero crush afterwards. It felt right. very, very similar. Okay. What do you expect? Uh, I think that both teams are very early game reliant. They like to sort of t set the tempo early on. I think the one thing where they differ is just how they utilize their mid players, because I think they want to try to give Jerex the best possible game. Right. Uh, and so they try to pick his hero as late as possible when it comes to the draft. They want to 
just open up with uh, some of their more stable cores. I feel like they have some ideas fleshed out. Like, we want to try to give Topson these type of heroes, the same heroes that they picked during TI. Let's give ILTW some sort of carry that can also initiate. Let's go for the early game. Let's try to grab an Aegis, get complete map control, and win. Whereas for me, it comes down to how they pick for Abed. They always seem to try to counterpick the enemy mid hero, give him the best game so that he can do the same thing and snowball them to a win. Alan, you, you pointed out that they, they rely on this last pick, Jamax pick a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. expecting the same? I think so. I think that's one of the things that OG has used to sort of distinguish their drafting approach from the other teams at this tournament. Uh, Fnatic, meanwhile, has made, made some nice adaptations of their own in the series this morning that we'll talk about. But I want to answer your original question, Paul, because you asked me, should I be hyped? for this series, and the answer is hell yes. This is the litmus test for these two teams. Fnatic, I think, with their performance at the CQ Major, took their spot at solid number five in terms of the world rankings. Again, I'm kind of leaving LGD out of the discussion here, but this is the litmus test for OG that I think we've all been waiting for. We've asked time and time again, this is like two teams. When their plan A works, they look like a top team. When it doesn't, they look really lost. Fnatic is a team that I think is going to give us that test for OG. Mm. I was going to ask all of you, actually, because I agree with you. The plan A has worked, and when it works, it looks great. The plan B, not so much. Did we see a plan B, though, against Ninjas in Pajamas? Mm, no. I or think did Ninjas in Pajamas let them have what they wanted again? Maybe like the Lycan could be a little bit of a plan B, but it fits yeah. their style, so it's not yeah. really. It's like kind of that similar thing anyway. Okay. So they're still looking for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, are Fnatic likely to give them that again? Yeah, I, I, I don't think that I don't think that Fnatic is necessarily going to give them uh, Troll, Ember, Mag, and Nyx in the same game, which, especially in an elimination match, I think is a little bit debatable. But I really love the drafting adjustments that we've seen Fnatic, especially over the last couple of days. One of the things that we highlighted on some previous panels is that because Fnatic doesn't run some of these first phase heroes for the other team, they don't play Chen, they don't play very much Nature's Prophet. Okay, they have to sort of adjust and one of the big adjustments is the tiny that they make they lean on that tiny in the first phase of their drafts which is a huge impact flex two four flex pick for them even occasionally as a three this morning though they came out dj played his first two phoenix matches of the last two patches he led in both games all five Fnatic heroes in damage. In the first game, he had 662 experience per minute. That is top 10 out of over 2,200 Pro Dota 2 appearances for the hero. That's the kind of thing that tells me Fnatic is hitting their late tournament stride. And he's struggled on that hero in the past a lot. Yes. They, I, I don't have the exact number, but they lost a lot of games on him playing that. I remember just seeing, I'd be like, oh God, another DJ Phoenix. Like he'd be, he'd play pretty well, but for some reason they just weren't able to get it together. And now they are, and they are changing a little bit of the way that they are drafting. Like you said, they don't pick the Coddles, they don't pick the Chens, but I think that could be something that's really concerning for them versus OG, because I think Coddles, kind of that hero that's been some teams, are, it's actually like unbanned in some games, and other teams, it's first pick, like for secrets. So I think that's a hero that's going to make a big difference, and Fnatic has to be careful. Yeah. Fog okay. rescued me there, by the way. I, I had said Prophet, you're right. It is the Coddle in the Chen that they don't play. And by the way, yeah, they had actually, the four games before that, it was always jabs on Phoenix. They had gone away from the DJ Phoenix completely. Yep. Okay. We're going to get more from uh, all three of our panel members in just a moment. But uh, first up, let's check in with Fnatic. A fantastic win earlier on, of course, against their SEA brothers, Mineski. But OG, oh, well, they're a completely different kettle of fish. We feel pretty good right now since Mineski and Fnatic is like the one of the biggest rivals in C server. And it's it feels good to know that we we're so kind of ahead of them. I think the first map, we were kind of sleepy and we're kind of slacking a little bit. And maybe our heroes are one of the problems. So yeah, we kind of just fixed it a little bit. I just came to the draft and we just tried to wake ourselves up. We always like know each other from the beginning because we play a lot in our server so maybe you can call that an advantage even if OG doesn't have Ana right now they're still pretty strong with the new guy the ILTW so we, we don't really want to underestimate them
Yeah, no underestimation from the team, and rightly so, because OG have definitely been on the rise. Uh, they remain the only team to have beaten Secret at this entire event. Secret currently 13-1, and one, which seems quite incredible. That was um, the most words I've ever heard from DJ. Was it really? Yeah. He doesn't mm -hmm. do many interviews. He never does. But he's so eloquently spoken as yes. well, so it's surprising. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't do many. We just don't ever really get to hear from the yeah. guy. It's, it's good to hear. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah. very good. Um, what he had to say in that, Will? Uh, I mean, they're, they're not going to underestimate them, obviously, but it's a completely different matchup for them. Like, the, the derby is the derby, and weird stuff happens during the meta, and the series has its own meta. Put all that aside, they can't really use anything that they did against Mineski this morning, can they? Uh, potentially. I mean, I think they still keep the overall style. Like, uh, I think the main thing is they were incorrect with their assessment of the life stealer. I think that's really what made it hard. I said it on the previous panel too. The first game. Yeah, is that they, yeah. they went in saying like, we'll give up this OP hero. You saw NIP actually do it yesterday too, where yeah. they gave OG yeah. the life stealer, but they had the better counter to it. They had a better understanding of how they were going to beat it with the Void Ursa OD. Uh, it just depends on like, I, I think most of this matchup is just going to be draft related. And OG is a very different team than Mineski. Just the way that they want to play. Uh, Mineski... I mean, things tend to get a little bit crazier with them. There's more cheese that you have to worry about along those lines, whereas OG is a little bit more straightforward, I'd imagine. Both teams, uh, the one similarity is like, I think their last four games, all of them have ended under like 35 minutes. For the most part, these guys try to end the game around like the 25 minute mark. And if not, I haven't really seen what an ultra late game looks like from either of these guys. Yeah, yeah. Seven wanna... straight games for OG have ended before the 35 minute mark indeed. Yep, OG want to finish early. Um, let's talk about OG. Fogged, what have, mm -hmm. what have, you, what have you made of their rise? Because it, it, it's, I guess, not everyone thought they'd be coming as strong as they did on day one. And when they took that game off secret, everyone sort of went, oh, okay, maybe they, maybe they found something now. I thought they'd be under a little bit more pressure because I thought that their drafts were a little bit like one dimensional a lot of times. Like they would pick yeah. very similar heroes, but for some reason here, it seems like they just keep getting those. They've been getting their drafts like over and over and over again because No Tail is just such an attraction, it seems. They're like, we have to actually ban three of No Tail's heroes in every yeah. single one of their games. And that just forces, it just opens up the draft, which allows them yeah. to get their heroes. Yeah, uh, I, I'm surprised, Alan, that no one is really, um, they know how they're gonna play. They know it's one dimensional. And yet, actually, they've still seen quite a lot of success here. Why is that? I think partly it's because their drafting style is very different. They bookend their supports, which really I haven't seen from any other team in this patch, where they're almost always trying to secure their five position first overall, if not the first phase. And then they're leaving Jerax's hero, be it a flex at, at earliest, they're picking it in their second phase, sometimes they'll pick it last. And the, the impact Oracle picks that we've seen from them in the fifth position that have just felt like they've ruined the game, uh, the fifth pick Nyx Assassin a couple of times, it, it feels like against everybody in this tournament bar secret, it feels like they've had this massive advantage at the four position with Jerax, partly due to skill, partly due to draft. They're playing against DJ, though. Yeah. <laughs> They're no longer going to have that big skill advantage, at least in this series. Yeah. Um, I guess the question is now, do you, do you continue to use those three bands to ban out No Tail, or do you or do you take a different strategy to ban Cause, thinking that, well, he can't play them all, at least? Ah, oh, man, I don't know. Because the problem is that when he plays one of his three heroes, they just look so damn dominant. Yeah. Yeah. Every time he has either his Enchantress, he has his Nature's Prophet, or his Chen, they just seem to right. have this game where ILTW goes absolutely bonkers afterwards because he secures the lane so well for him. But the, isn't the problem now, Fog, though, that they ban those three and he's still got another two that he can play and still enable his team? But not as well. Yeah, I sure. I and, agree. And, okay, get, get, get them a little bit better of a chance, but but they can't just... I, I don't know. I, I, I just wonder whether banning three supports in the opening is is hurting other teams with what they want to do. I'm thinking maybe the only one that might stand out is the Enchantress, but that's like... Right. I don't know, because that hero also has just apparently an incredible use when, no t when it's in No-Tail's yeah, hands. No He's the only one who makes it yeah. work, it seems. Yeah, it does. Okay, we're going to get more from all of you in just a moment, but uh, I know how much you guys uh, love cheering for your favorite teams, but also the Katowice Trail are always, always respectful of every team. It's time to cheer for our two teams entering the Spodek Arena. Kato, we had another series, of course, Team Secret establishing dominance. But for this one, we are going to be having a back and forth we are all going to enjoy. These two teams are in momentum and are ready to collide. Let's meet our first team to the stage. Welcome back for Natty!
One more time, make some noise for their opponents. Oh, gee! Katowice, your final series of the day. Give it up and get hyped for Fnatic versus OG. The fight for a place in the top three at ESL1 Katowice is about to get underway. It's Fnatic going head-to-head -head with the TI champions, OG. Fnatic having shown the better form over the last few months, and certainly in the majors, that's for sure. And OG returning to form, potentially at the right time. Um, I know you don't want to pick too early, Blitz, but it's nice to see them in New Year actually performing well. Oh, for sure. Like, I love OG. I think personally they're one of the most entertaining teams to watch. Like, no matter what iteration it is, no matter what happens, it always just feels like they're a fun team to have in Dota. And I think it all comes back to No-Tail. Mm -hmm. He's like, everyone always makes a lot of fuss about like Anna and all their new pickups and stuff like that. But like, this guy is as good as he is. I feel like he doesn't get the respect he deserves. Yeah, so one, when, you, when you talk about like the best captains in the world, people naturally uh, gravitate towards Puppy, uh, Kuro, PPD. Yep. This guy has won multiple majors. When majors were, you know, they were just few and far between, he won all of them under the best competition. He won a TI under the, like, the hardest of circumstances with a team that formed like three weeks before. Uh, they almost got knocked out of the quals. He grinded his way through. This guy's understanding of the TI meta as well, like the way that he understood like Silencer, Ogre, I need to play these supports. These are the ones that enable my team. He set that meta. He set the tempo for the next three months after that. This guy's a Dota genius. You just don't really think about it because he's so unassuming compared to those other captains. Those guys are a little bit more outspoken. They're a little bit more in your face. This guy just smiles. He sits back. You know, he smiles all the time. Like, you don't really... He does now. Yeah. Well, I, I remember a different version of this man five years at ago. TI, at TI, he was ultra-focused. You know, he was, like, in the zone. Yeah. He knew when to turn it on. I mean, this guy just does it all. And we're seeing it again. Remember when he was a carry, you had to ban out all his heroes. When he was a support, he switches back yeah. very selflessly. Yeah, yeah. You now have to deal with all his heroes. Like you said, teams are debating whether or not they have to ban out three different five position heroes. Yeah. Like, who, who gets that kind of respect? And you know what some people called him as well, which was ridiculous, is people called him no brain and stuff. Yes, they, they also called him the luckiest Dota player ever. Mm -hmm. What, what? Uh, this guy has consistently proven his success over and over yeah. again. Yep. I mean, how many guys have won majors and TIs at multiple roles? <laughs> the guy, it's funny though, OG in a way, they embrace that stuff, right? Like oh, Topson, yeah. I mean, well, I he, he calls himself Flops on exactly. his own stream. Oh, I know, dude, his name, I mean, it was, it was Big Daddy No Tail, right? His name, and yeah. then he switched it, and he kept like, he kept like switching it around to just like, he would just take the, take the hate, and he'd make it fuels me. It's fine. It's whatever. Yeah, and said, I mean, if you go all the way back to the start of his career, or the middle of his career, he got plenty of flame as a man that was very outspoken. And so he's, he, and he's had plenty of abuse over the years as a you know, washed up French player, can't play Dota at a high level, doesn't deserve to be in a team coaching a major winner. He's, he's had the whole lot, I remember all of it. Yeah, I can't believe the guy that used to play on Sigma Int. <laughs> <laughs> and what was it, Quantic or something like that? Yes, now, Quantic. Time. Is now, yeah. I'm calling him like a TI champion. I, yeah. So I, as everybody knows, Fiend read it like crazy. And I was I remember when OG wasn't doing so well in the groups at TI, I'd read all those threads and it'd always be the same thing. I remember there was two threads specifically calling out Seb. They're like, there's no way they come oh. into TI with this guy. This guy's so garbage. I reread those <laughs> after TI. It was the greatest thing ever. It was just like 200 <laughs> comments each of saying like, this guy's worthless. I have no idea why anybody's playing with him, but it's because of his outspoken nature. Of course. He puts himself on that yeah. kind of thing. The rest of his team doesn't have to cop any flag. Yeah. And he's got that sort of mentality. He has that winner's mentality. Yeah. I don't care what you say, I'm gonna succeed. Yeah. It took him such a long time. Who transitions after what? It was like two years of a coach role, yep. steps in at the last second after... Six years between yeah. his last TI performance, like appearance, and winning it. And I mean, you know, he pretty you know, much he, he, he uh, paneled and casted at some, that's not true. Yeah. 
You know, the funny thing player. is it hasn't changed. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. It hasn't changed a bit after TI. I was reading yeah. right last night after the game. Yeah. The number of flames after game one against Nip, and then he comes back and he plays the best core profit game since TI in game two, and there's not a single comment. He's like that guy, that player that goes to road games and just goes to the crowd. Yeah, I mean, uh, what was it, a week, 10 days after he won TI, he was playing a pub, mm -hmm. and he was having an argument with a guy in the game about how to play the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was on Reddit. Yep, of course. Because he, because he was arguing with a guy, and the guy was like, you know, wow. who do you think you are, a TI winner? <laughs> This is interesting. OG has, has has looked at those games from this morning. That was the first two DJ Phoenix games in this patch. It was actually the first two Ice 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 Chaos Knight games in the last two patches, and they take it away in the first match. I actually, I really liked how they played with this CK. I know it's been on the rise, of course, for that like off lane, and then he got nerfed, but I thought it played so perfectly into the way he wants to play. He's just very aggressive in your face, and he's just obnoxious, and that is exactly the style that I feel like that hero fits. Same thing with the Bruin. Oh, Fnatic hey. changed the entire formula. And I, I, I asked, didn't I? I said, yep. will they stick to banning three supports? And the answer is no. They take out the Troll and the Ember and the Monkey King. This is uh like the what Navi did to Alliance, right, where they just banned out, uh, was it EGM instead of trying to ban out Bulldog? Yep. They just yep. focused one hero. Yep. They're like, guys, we can't, the thing about banning is, you can't just ban everything. You have to let something through yep. in Dota. Teams but, play but everything good. IOTW's troll has been very good. Yep. Yes. Very good at this time and, and before as well. The Jerex, the price. Monkey King. Right. They're like Tops and Monkey King ban. It's kind of banning two, isn't it? Fnatic doesn't play which two heroes? Chen and Coddle. Yeah. They take the, the NP. That's the problem. Right, that's the problem, and I think yeah. you, you have to then pivot. Think about pivoting back to the tiny. I mean, I guess you can first phase Phoenix again, but CK that Phoenix? CK counter is out. Is, CK's is out. no longer there. Yep, CK's gone. It's banned, along with the brew. And the Shadow Shaman that they loved throughout the group yep. stages, the ET Shadow Shaman that they did a lot, is there. Okay. Okay, ET Life Stealer. I like that better. Would you consider what was it? Uh, NIP's counter was uh, the Ursa. People have been doing Razor a lot, but I feel like Razor. I think Ursa. So OG is has not yeah. played Ursa since TI. That was one of the big heroes that I was looking at. They have er, OG has been leaving the Life Stealer in the pool, but they do not play Ursa. The reason, I, by the way, I was saying that I like the Life Stealer better than the Shadow Shaman. I just think that Life Stealer is a crazy, ridiculous hero. Just oh, like I what I was saying, he's just a hero that can. Yeah. He does everything. Does well, everything. Exactly. And it's one of those things where you look at OG, we talked about the duration splits for them and the fact that they haven't always reacted well when they're taken into the life game. Lifestealer in this patch profiles as an extreme late game hero. His win rate is about 50-50 before 40 minutes, spikes up to close to 70% after that. That rage talent. Yeah. It is pretty ridiculous. Oh, we saw the other night, right? With the Rage Talent and a BKB, and he's like, and a Refresher, he has like 50 seconds of Magic Community. Yeah, 52 seconds of Magic Community with a Refresher Shard. Or maybe, maybe I'm off. Uh, 51, sorry. BKB ticks down. If it's 10 seconds. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Hello. Well done. Thanks. That was good. So PA, so you got to ban Magnus, right? You would think. This Even is where, I mean, there. NIP didn't ban it second phase yesterday and we were so surprised but you, you got to believe that magnus has to be in the forefront i'd uh i'd consider getting rid of bat rider right now if i was og if you're og if yeah, you're og yeah. Yeah, yeah i mean if you're fanatic you don't care about bat rider life server versus bat rider is probably like the best possible matchup you can get absolutely but if i think if you're og it's uh it's a vehicle for the life sealer and more importantly i think it's very good against both the nature's prophet and the pa it's mm -hmm. one of the few heroes that can pressure the pa because you don't rely on right clicks either but OG instead get rid of uh, the timber saw. Yeah, that yeah, was something that they were doing yesterday, both to protect against the uh, core profit to preserve the flex value of that profit, and because so many of the heroes that Topson relies on the mid lane, that like that Monkey King, struggle with the timber matchup. Yeah, I think the I, I absolutely love the bat. I think I saw Liquid doing that today actually in MDL. Yeah. Versus EG. I think they did the Bat Rider versus the PA, and he just destroyed this I mean, PA the I, whole game. I personally think like remember the game that I wanted a Bat Rider uh, that we were watching together too. I think this hero, he's not good in all situations, but in very specific ones where you can at least counter one core hero and you can at least deal with one of the supports. Like, if this is a double core, you feel pretty good about playing Batrider, I think, against both of them. And you have a Life Stealer, so it's just like it's a yeah. triple benefit. Right. Because really. uh, I, I personally think, like, Life Stealer, you, you always want some kind of vehicle for him. Like, the hero increases in value so much more when you just get the instant ability to just jump somebody. It's like your own version of, like, a mini Echo Slam where you burst somebody down off the, fight, off the bat. You don't really have to use your Rage or anything like that either because, you know, they're held in place. Absolutely. Yeah. And or the, just anyone to start the fight. That's yeah. always mine. It's like a vehicle is... Amazing. It's just that's uh, that's probably number one. Number two is still someone else. So someone to start the fight so you can just run in and 
And yeah. the, the movement speed change to Firefly means that it's no longer nearly as blink dependent. You can you can infest with Nakes and you can start running those plays before the blink dagger comes online with the Bat Rider. You have flexibility to build drums first. It's, it just makes it feel so much more impactful. Band Oracle, that's probably the Bat yeah. Rider. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I would have imagined so, but who knows how... Uh... I thought they would have snapped it if they... Yeah, I thought after the first two picks... Yep. Fnatic does not play Bat Rider. Or at least not in the last two patches. Well, if they did, that would have been uh, yeah. that would have been good. Again, it's tricky, right? Because when you analyze the team like Secret, they kind of play everything. Whereas when you're talking about these teams, there's a lot more sort of team-specific hero pools in play. Yeah. Fnatic also get last pick, right? You could do something like Storm too, previous to what they did before. Storms doesn't feel bad against either of these heroes. Oh, hmm. Well, they, they're going to go back to the DJ or Spirit, and yeah. that's something that I I just actually no, never mind. They run this Earth Spirit at both support positions. I also don't know where the ET is still. I yep. don't know if it could. I think that could still be your three position hero. I, agree. I saw a couple of teams run it, and it seems. I mean, seems, seems pretty decent. I also love that hero. I just don't think you. I, I don't think you could run NP as a core anymore. I really don't. I think you've got you got so many effective ways now. So you get so much catch to chase that NP into the trees. You know what I really like, by the way, about Lifestealer as a pick. Uh, just kind of ranting here, musing. Is that uh, when it comes to draft order, anyways? Like, it's so nice to be able to just first to a core. It oh, always yeah. is. And when you know your core is like, it's not really going to get countered by anything. It feels so good because you just don't. You can pick your supports later on. You can maintain that flexibility or at least like the illusion of it. Like, this is still maybe this. Like, we can get questions asked about stuff like that. And it comes down to the fact that you can first to your carry or your mid like that. It feels really nice. Yeah. I always loved whenever like the jug and the life sealer meta because your carry your carry player he has a built a built in BKB so right. he can't be like I we need BKB to, to fight. Yeah, he has. No, we don't oh, have to play around that timing anymore. Yeah. And the other thing is that a lot of the heroes that counter the life sealer, you take something like an Ursa. They're heroes that as oh. long as the counter oh, is early. Is, is that the oh, first venge? No. That's at the first venge of yeah. the tournament, right? It's the first venge of this tournament. We saw it at uh, newbie ran it at MDL. Uh huh. But I believe it's the first, and this, man, oh man. An instant darks here, so now so they've got the... that explains the Oracle. That explains the Oracle ban then, yeah. yeah. And it, I mean, snap to pick Nyx. I think it kind of makes sense. Uh, I think it acts in a similar way as the bat. It just, you don't have as good of a jump, but at the same time, like, it's good overall team fight. Where is this Venge going to play? Five seconds remain. Uh, I'd imagine... Is this Core Venge? I'm pretty sure she's this... I guess we'll see. I, don't know. I, I actually band, think 100th right now? It's our 100th. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Pick tool That's band. a good round number, Paul. I'd like to keep it at that just because I'm a little OCD. Yeah, Paul. <laughs> There's uh, an Omni Knight that still hasn't been picked. Omni Knight? Oh, no. It has had one band, though. So it yeah, be one band. Best, yeah. Do we count that? Yeah. Dude, so wait, really? 100 pixel band. We cannot count it. Oh. They can count it. Yeah. I don't like that. 100 pixel band. Let's see. What's the actual pick number? Um, 96, I think. Maybe. Okay. I could check it, but I want to know if I. I like that Nyx. I like that Nyx pick. It uh, it sort of dissuades the storm. That was when we were talking yeah. about the Bat Rider earlier. That was one of my concerns. Yeah, okay. I actually really I still like Storm against. Uh, I think he's one of the few in heroes I don't mind that much. Ninety five against Nyx. Because your in game's not really that ridiculous. No, it's not. And if you go Bloodstone, you it doesn't give you it doesn't make you take any additional damage. And importantly, uh. Like, unless you really mess up and you drop Remnant and he gets into the middle of it, you usually can't keep up with the speed of the hero. So what do Fnatic go back for here with their fifth pick? Because they, ordinarily Fnatic are a team that they like to pick these scaling heroes. They like to go later. I, I, I would not have, I would not rule out something like an Abed Medusa, but this OG lineup has just such huge tempo potential. I feel like if you take Dusa, your lineup is kind of like counterintuitive. You might be a little bit too slow. I was thinking Dragonite. Yeah, for Fnatic? Yeah, just okay. to round it in. It's just like this old Darkseer Dragonite thing that you group up and... Yeah. So, so is this going to be... The, is this like Seb? They've played one game of Venge um, since TI uh, that ILTW played as a core. Yeah, I, I, I think... Yeah, yeah I've only seen them play it as a core that's, as well. That's the only game they've played since TI with Venge. Hmm. We also just you want to get the levels of the levels of swap online early so that you have the reach to get the to get the life shield out of position. Is that they have a PA? Right? Oh so no! It's just like where are the I don't know. Like that was um, by the way, it was a Bucharest money when you want to do like game. Quaswex Invoker or something, keep people off. Um, oh. E buff surge. 
versus uh, Earth Spirit and Life Stealer, though. Yeah, you kind of just get run at. You just too. get eaten by those two. They just kill you by themselves. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, nobody's really fun to play against. That is the problem. It's very true. You never, as a mid player, would be like, oh man, I'm going to die here quite a few times. I mean, I, so do you go back to a Topson special and just pick a Monkey King? No, it's, it's banned. banned. It's already banned. banned. I don't know, Pugna? Hmm. Wouldn't mind Pugna. Wait, is, is Ember still? No, Ember's banned. Monkey's banned. They banned all the cores, sure. Oh, they take. Whoa. Oh. That's interesting. Is that, wait, Nick's mid? Wait, who's mid? I think Benj. PA? They don't have a true mid. They don't have a true mid. It's gonna be a, huh. it's gonna be Venge or mid. They have uh, a lot Venge of PA. I think this fight. might be. It's either. I think it's either PA or NP. <laughs> huh. Mm. Okay. Well, that's given Fnatic something to think about. OG's got like like you're saying like their team fight is very limited, and Fnatic's got a crazy amount of team fight coming yeah. into play. They're gonna run at you though. OG. OG's gonna sure. look to just yeah just they're gonna run at you set the pace and beat the ones, the aggressors. They can't slow it down, though. Yeah, so the fun part is now Abe gets to say, like, I want to play XYZ. Wow. And they go back for his tiny. Uh, it's a lot of melee heroes, and that's five melee heroes, in fact, on Fnatic. Yeah, but it's with the Surge, the AoE, AoE Surge, surge at level yep. 20. Aura stack, AoE Surge. Huh. Shout out to Puppy. He did do that at CQ, and they dominated that game. We oh all were gosh. very questionable about it, too, and it was just a complete stomp. Mm. Well, but and, and the huh. thing is, we questioned it because we felt like the opposing lineup had a lot of tools to punish the five melee heroes. I'm not convinced that this OG lineup has the tools that you talk about to punish melee. Yeah, I'm kind of inclined to agree. And they don't really have like this Nyx. He's good versus the, he's good versus ET and he's good versus Darkseer, but versus the other heroes, he doesn't, they don't really care too much about him. And there's also some questions around which lanes they're going to use. Yeah, I just have. I'm not, too sure. I'm not too sure who's mid. That's that's going to be the question. If OG has something in their back pocket in terms of these laning matchups, that's what's really going to turn this game. Because unless they can surprise Fnatic with some of these lanes, I think this Fnatic lineup is really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, there's the thoughts from our uh, panel. Of course, uh, time now to head to the arena for game number one. An action-packed draft, good Dota, a wonderful arena, and two amazing casters. We have almost everything but one of those. Kyle, hello, welcome to the broadcast, and let's get started. Fnatic versus OG game one. I'm hoping for some excitement. Yeah, me too. The last series was uh, quite a display from Secret, but you know, when you know who's <laughs> gonna win, it can be a bit dull at times, but they certainly deserve their place in the grand final. OG Fnatic, TI winners versus the undisputable best team in Southeast Asia at the moment. Yeah, Fnatic have to do it hard as well. They're the last representative of Group B. Everyone else has come through that Group A part and just survived. Uh, so OG, they were heavily tested. Of course, Fnatic has been a little bit more of a bumpy run uh, going down to Gambit 2-1. They went against Maneski 2-1 as well. So every series has gone to three for this team. And I'm kind of surprised, Kyle, and I'm, and I'm wondering too, like, does Fnatic have that momentum lost from the group stage? Because they looked really, really, really clean in the group stage. Yeah, but I think that the meta's developed. I think a couple players have been discussing in the interviews where there's two events going on simultaneously. So there's just, it, it's almost like more than a TI's worth of games being played around the world. There's so much to learn and steal from these other regions and these other teams in these events. And Fnatic, they haven't really adapted too much. They're sticking to their strengths, even demonstrated by the last pick on the op-ed Tiny. Nothing really unique about this, and they've lost a bit of the edge strategically, but they've been outplaying a lot of their opponents. And in this game, they're gonna need to play very quickly. I'm afraid for what OG might be able to do if they get a bit of an advantage. They'll just have so much aura stacking to deal with. Mm -hmm. And you mean these, uh, well, of course, you could also look to the late game of OG, the PA and Dooms, this never-ending income that comes in from the Doombringer and the Phantom Assassin, who have seen many times just crit their way to victory. But you are right with, like, 
Also, auras coming in from Fnatic's side. There are also combinations from their side. Their team fight looks a lot of fun. And putting the weight on the shoulders of Ice 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 is something he's always stepped up to as well. On a Dark Seer, this man's preparing for the long haul. Three mangoes, six tangos. This Dark Seer wants to live. Yep. And I look forward to seeing Notel playing this support prophet. One of the, really the only team left that will reliably first pick this hero, knowing that nine times out of ten it'll be Notel. They know, of course, that Seb could play it as well, like we saw yesterday. But he can do a, if he bodies this lifestealer, the win condition from Fnatic is going to be delayed. And that puts a lot of pressure on the Dark Seer of Ice Ice Ice. It's not, you know, you can do this cool little gimmick here, killing the creep wave behind tower. What they're going to do is try to get. Uh, DJ level two, and then look to either have him TP top with an ion shell placed on him preemptively, or perhaps look to go mid, where Thompson's Venge. We have, have we seen him play this hero? I figured it would be this once I saw it picked because he we just refuses to play normal things. The panel were questioning. I was actually checking the heroes that weren't played before, like uh, this week, and Vengeful Spirit was most definitely in that list. So it's it's a new one for him. We were hoping for the Invoker pickup uh, with mass buffs going across the field, but uh, we get the VS instead. My LTW, I, yeah, he gets he gets to play the offline PA. You can see up top, MP did a really cool trick here where he actually pulled aggro on a couple of creeps. Oh, uh, Jarex and Notail were unable to stop him, so he's going to continue to maintain lane control, even though like this is late in the game theoretically, just based on the number of waves. So he'll he's already level two. He hasn't really been pressured like you'd want as a tri lane. <laughs> Can you actually pressure him in the tri lane when you've got Elder Titan standing right behind? Like, that's plus 75 DJ. damage. And, well, welcome to the company. Yep. No tells down already. Jabs, it was a quick rotation over. And Jabs got that damage out. It was DJ with the Iron Shell yep. buff up from Darkseer that just made that work. Told you, you get level two off two waves. Darkseer is now guaranteed going to be able to sustain himself in this lane. And because you have that Ion Shell, that's just too much. OG has no chance. And because their support combo is so weak, at these early levels. Like, what does a Furion do on the defensive? His whole concept is to pressure like he is now. Hit the Elder Titan. Don't allow these enemy supports to trade. But when you get those kills, all of a sudden this lane is equalized. Mm -hmm. Great rotations from Fnatic. This is the crisp kind of play we saw from them in the yeah. group stage. And them setting the tempo of the game against OG. Yeah. Very critical for him. I like what Seb's doing too, though. You can see down bottom, he's rushed glove paste, and he's got two points to devour. He's just going to and try and accelerate as fast as possible towards that Midas and abuse the fact that, sure, Darkseer is going to be able to get every CS in back lane, but I'll get far more net worth as this game continues because I can play as greedy as I want to. You're talking about OG having a bad early game and then a good comeback around the 15-minute mark. Kyle, I am surprised. Mm. They still look to try and fight up on top lane, but Earth Spirit, without the buff up from the Iron Shell, maybe doesn't feel as confident. Notel's chip damage is starting to do some work. That's why Jabs is already yep. burning off the south, getting ready to fight once more. And you got to be careful as OG. Abed just bottled a haste room bottle. So for going the next two minutes. Rolling boulder in towards the top there after Notel. The stun from Jirax will create a little bit of space, but Notel still can't survive. MP, Jabs, and DJ all focusing on the support profit, then turning their attention to Jirax. Heavy damage, but they won't find the kill. And a big part of that, Jabs already had the kill and the assist earlier, so he has the early boots along with the shield. He can play very aggressive, and they can just continue to kill Notel. They saw, oh, they saw him canceling the TP. <laughs> and no uh -oh. TPing into base this time around. Summons up the tree, sees Jabs in the tree line. He's already got the spirit out, looking for the extra buff, and he's got a plus oh 63. But still, the trees as well as Notel focusing on a great double stun from Jirax onto DJ as well as Jabs, but they're gonna find the damage into ILTW, and they're not done just yet. DJ's running away from the trees and Notel himself. The Jabs stick charges lets him stand a little bit longer, plus a spirit refresh. Jirax doesn't have much more to give. Actually, he does if he wants to burn the mango. He'll have a stun available, and they move up towards MP. No rage build on the life stealer, but Jirax has done well off the mark. And they're actually wrapping around. They're going to double suicide themselves. <laughs> <laughs> this is DJ and Jabs You'll underneath the tier two tower. Alone. The TPs are coming in. Oh, wait, hang on. No towers TP'd back to the tower to try and chase down Jabs in the tree, so he can actually get some experience from this. Yeah, Abed. He, was, he used the haste middle, so we won't see any rotations. He's actually, Thompson doing surprising, surprisingly well in this mid lane, and I think Jabs is totally fine giving that kill away to Notel. Yeah, you can see just the early kills. You have a shield on the Life Stealer, a shield on the Elder Titan. They can play so aggressive, and because all three heroes have boots, and Notel doesn't, mm -hmm. not really much he can do once he gets initiated on. Bottom lane, look at Seb. He's yeah. gonna have his Midas completed. 
in he is this wave. A four and a half minute Midas. It'll be at him by about 510. SAP boys gonna have fun with that one. We'll have fun with the top lane fight. ILTW, way too much damage once again. Jabs hit so hard, but the stick charges, it gives him more life. They'll come underneath the tower, he's still alive. 14 HP. The Phantom Assassin is able to just strike away. And Fnatic can't ensure the kill, but they're looking to rotate over. Get the bounty runes. Jirax has his Earth Spike available, so he can look for his right target. The runes will spawn, but as Jirax is being initiated on, trying to find the kill, ILTW burns the shrine already so they can get him to the fight. No tell, no point in Sprout. So no control on Fnatic just yet. Yeah, all four runes went the way of Fnatic. Ice, ice, ice. He's always pushing that bottom lane, so there's really nothing that Seb could do to contest those runes. And yeah, the first Midas usage at 5 minutes and 13 seconds. 100% efficiency, and yeah, the fastest on the patch so far. Two seconds. Yeah. Two seconds. This, but two seconds is enough. It's like a 100-meter sprint. Yep, this is the traditional way to counter a Darkseer. It, Doom, uh, really any hero with high base regen, especially one that can just eat these ion shell creeps, you force Darkseer to backlane you, and just you're never really able to be pressured, especially as a Doom. So you just free farm, but you get to itemize for raw scaling, whereas Darkseer has to invest in regen. He's more of this mid-game tempo hero, so he's got to buy Arcane Boots at the very minimum or a Soul Ring. You just rush Midas, and Seb is going to scale astronomically as this game continues already with that fourth point in Devour. Wow, a dream game for Seb. Yeah. We haven't seen those, uh, but he'll have a great time, as you said, but up on the top lane. I want to keep my eyes there. Fnatic, they move both the supports off the lane, but it's an ISL, ISL surged up ES running straight towards the front lines. It's a good start from GRX, actually curving it around into MP as well. They'll chase down Nortel with the stomp, slow him down and sleep him up, kill him off. Nortel falls. Now, Jirax, not much more he can do when MP rages. The stun is now going to come off cooldown, but it's too late. It's already a double kill for MP. They're looking for the third into ILTW, the last remaining player of OG's offlane. The TP out will be successful, and he goes all the way home. Yeah, but you got to bear in mind that Fnatic need these kills. This is the way their draft is supposed to operate. It's get the Earth Spirit involved and find hero kills. There's really no other way for them to be accelerating. Mid is a trade, but bottom lane, you've got to be concerned just because Seb is going to be such a force in this game, thanks to the free farm he's acquired. <laughs> got to keep playing fast for Fnatic, the toss back. Yep, it's good in towards the mid lane. Thompson being dragged around, and this is not where he needs to be. He's got Wave of Terror, no stuns available. So he just gets that negative armor into Arbed. The stun, it does not reach for Jirax, but Arbed, another quick toss, throw in the ES. He doesn't have any other abilities, DJ. Oh, but he'll good. have it in two seconds' time, but that's why Ice 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 just moves over. DJ will be the one to find the kill. And an interesting build from Thompson as well. He went for raw stats, three Wraith Bands, then Boots. Max Aura, three points wave of terror. No point in stun, no point in swap. Is it all preparing for this huge for a huge group up? Like is, is that what this is meant for or? We'll have to wait and see, but it certainly increases his ability, his pushing power. But as he said himself, he's either Topson or Flopson. We'll have to wait and see how this game develops before we can actually make a a judgment on the TI winner. MP thinking about going after No Tail. And then he will. He'll start it off with the open wounds. Rage is still available. Here comes your rolling boulder in. Is there a silence or a kick? There will be, but it's over towards Jirax. And that's where they switch their target over. But Jirax gets another double stun, but still loses his life. It's Ice, 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 the man who's not on this lane that gets the kill. Once again, this Iron Shell high level onto the ES, and they rotate him towards the top lane. Yep, that was really cool from Jirax, though. He tanked the roll stun to ensure that No Tail would be able to survive. Almost got out of dodge, but just not enough. And yeah, just keep Fnatic, they've got to keep the pressure up. Ice 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 has Arcanes, he's rushing Mech now. OG should be able to outscale as this game continues. The Venge will, like, Venge is so much, not, not a hard, I don't know how to put it, like, not a harder carry than you'd realize, but he does way more damage than people recognize, especially considering that the Doom will probably have a Wolf at some point, and it's all about giving this PA a steroid, as they've demonstrated time and time again, they know how to do, and they know how to win games with it. Seb, probably on the Doom, yep. Oh, yep. Already got it off. Ice 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 can tank through. This the problem is he can't run away from the Doombringer who's pumping in more damage. And that he cannot tank over. Elder Titan moving in, looking for a denial. And nice. yeah, she gets it. Jabs. Seb just needed one hit to land the kill off the Darkseer. <laughs> yeah, I love the build from Seb here. Just Midas phase drums. His whole concept is going to be, I'm going to get to a point where I'm just going to run at this Fnatic lineup. He's the answer to the ET, the Tiny and the Earth, really the entire side of Fnatic just gets wrecked when he gets enough points. 
into that Infernal Blade. So he has to get ahead of the game and then be the aggressor, be that tempo hero. Rolling Boulder up on top. They're going up to no tail once again. MP into the rage. They need more damage quicker and nice. they've got it. Thanks to the infest pop, Notal will fall with no Jirax to save him this yep. time. And that actually finishes his Midas as well. A bit behind Sebs, but this is a life stealer after all. But you can see already 2,000 net worth behind. It's kind of, it just, I, I feel like I almost understated just how fast this Doom can farm when you max devour in addition to having a Midas. Every 40 seconds, and he's using it off cooldown, he devours a creep for an extra 100 bonus gold in addition to the Midas. Like, this is... It's not balance. <laughs> He's going to be so farmed. <laughs> hey, you've, you've only got a difference of, what, six minutes on the minus between MP and him. That's fine. Um, yeah. And it just, it's always these auras, man. Oh, look at Thompson. Wow. Three Wraith Bands into Vlad's. DJ and Arbet, they smoked between both of their Observe Wards and right on top of an OG Observer yeah, Ward and the Radiant scanning just to make sure they're on bottom lane. But they knew they were there because Jurex was able to land the stun and control the Bounty Rune on bot. You can see, look at the item that Seb's queued up. Radiance. <laughs> you want to talk about not being on a clock. It's, it's the hard carry, Doom. Looking for a target. Ice, ice, ice. There's your toss back, trying to get the double man into the wall, but maybe they have extra support as DJ arrives. It's a great kick in silence, hitting no tail as well. Seb is so low on life, and MP has arrived for the fight. He'll get the open wounds out and the kill onto Seb, but they want more. Another toss forward. Arbed claiming Jurex and the rolling boulder. No tail. He can't complete anything. He'll go down as well. And Fnatic, they bring the numbers, they bring the strength. And they'll take that tier one tower. Yeah, perfect play. The Fnatic understand that their draft will fall off. They need to continue to play with tempo, play around Ice Ice Ice. It's very difficult to bring Darkseer to your other lanes. You want to ensure that you're playing into his area of the map. So even though that, that's, that smoke was scouted out, Abed with a surprise haste rune shows up and they just go full divide. And there's really nothing OG can do to stop the Fnatic lineup if there are four people diving. We saw the toss back into the wall was quite nice. Seb might have lived here, but as you can see, he's gonna escape up top. If he gets the net off onto the life stealer before this hit, maybe he lives, but unfortunately, we'll go down to that last right click. Jerex as well under tower. Another roll from DJ, guys. Been on point with this Earth Spirit. Look at his KDA already, two, one, and nine. Part of 11 of 12 kills in 11 minutes. The ES, the ES is just absolutely everywhere, and they go for more fights. Speaking of which, DJ rolling boulders in. No Tal tries to hide himself inside the sprout. It won't work, as Seb underneath the tier one tower, being chased down by four heroes. Topson is nearby, gets a good wave of terror off. They'll swap him back in. They want the kill onto Ice, Ice, Ice. He is sitting at seven armor, but that's still enough, or maybe it's not. Not when I LTW brings his own form of damage in. Finding the kill, Jabs, no, the stun's available. He will not be able to get the stomp off. MP Radius yeah, will avoid the magic missile. He's inside DJ, he needs a rolling boulder away. No one can block the rolling boulder out. So DJ back under the T1 tower. The Medic taking Lifesteal to safety, but is he done just yet? This is where the draft of OG starts to get scary, though. Abed with another incredible it rune. Is blink forward, able to actually hit a huge avalanche. But where's the follow-up? It's not there yet. Seb is the main man in the front lines, tanking it all through. Dark is only just going to respawn, but you've already managed to get a two off. Two heroes down for OG. ILTW looking to fight once again. He's underneath jabs, a triple kill for this ET. How hard is this man hitting? Plus 204 damage on an Elder Titan 13 minutes in, and the chase is continuing. They're looking towards the Earth Spirit. Seb's trying to do the work. He's still in the middle of this entire fight. No time will arrive too. Sprouting up DJ, trying to isolate the Earth Spirit. He's got no man to really work with, while Lifesteal is having his own battle on the side. DJ will go down. Jirax as well. This is just scrappy, scrappy fighting. Talk about excitement. I feel like we've already had more than we did in the entire previous series. 17 to 6, but it's still a relatively even game because OG is going to continue to out naturally GPM the Fnatic lineup. And you can see just both teams really understanding their win conditions. This is just really fun to watch. Topson, keep in mind that change to your Venge aura, you now automatically spawn what used to be your Ag's ability of an illusion of yourself when you die. So he'll maintain that Vengeance aura along with the Vlad's aura, even if you take him down first. That's 45% plus damage to Seb and ILTW's PA. This is a really nice kill if they can actually claim it, trying to move around, but support is arriving. Fnatic is coming in a quick silence over on the Doombringer. He doesn't have Doom available for the moment as Jirax is the one who's sticking out. Thanks to Magnetize of DJ with the back back in. Jirax still ticking down so low, but the damage is being done the opposite direction. Thompson Dude. and Notar claiming oh two God. kills their own. Let's make it three. Seb will take the unstoppable spree of MP, but they're not done yet. Jabs, trap, and killed. Fnatic. Well, he's swing back the other way. Did I mention as well that 
Doom finally found a wolf creep. So now Seb's got a bonus Venge aura for plus 30% damage. He's He was hitting for over 220. It's 14 minutes into the game. All he has to do, like, this is the concern that I have with Fnatic's lineup. If you don't have this massive execution around your initiation, mm -hmm. OG, they have about as much damage as old Drow lineups did. They can just stand still and click you to death. And it, the raw power of this team, you can see, MP recognizes I can't afford to wait for Radiance. We have to continue to play fast. Seb is 3,000 gold ahead of his nearest opponent. Sure. Doombringer things. Do you actually think the BKB is the way to go as opposed to like building up auras, building up more team fight for him? I, I think if you go BKB, you equalize and all of a sudden Fnatic don't even have the ability to target Doom. Now he's going to be able to take out whoever he wants and run straight at jabs. He was crucial to winning that engagement in the mid lane, had a two-man stomp, but Doom just eats Elder Titan for breakfast. You can't actually get off a stomp if Doom is in the area because he just spams Infernal Blade on you. Which is why the ET's just turned into a spirit level of damage. Because at least you can, you're can you going to cast that before the fight begins. So he's actually hitting just as hard as the Doombringer does, technically. With a plus 200 damage on both sides of that fence. Yeah, but the problem is, ET's got 5 armor. Down to negative 1 once he gets hit by that wave of terror. And Doom's got 9. Exactly. One big change, and part of the reason we see all these strength heroes, the phase boots. Same with Life Stealer. You can buy phase boots for that free 6 armor. That's so valuable. It's 30% effective HP against physical damage. And when you already naturally have such high strength gain, it, you're deceptively tanky just because of this change to the boots. Well, it's like both teams are happy just to settle things down for the moment. We don't have any, like, five-minute runes spawning for another four. Roshan is definitely not in the cards for anybody. They're just hoping for a couple of pickoffs here or there. We gotta get a... St this has to be the fastest this tournament. Somebody hit 10k net worth. <laughs> like 16 minutes, 20? Come on. That's pretty damn fast. They're coming in. Observers and sentries planted. Jirax is far enough away, and thanks to his own observer ward, he sees all of Fnatic running through the radiant jungle towards the mid lane. And I love. But they don't want anything to do with this. PA still farming top lane, trying to finish up this battle fury. I just love what OG did. Like they fought. Yeah, they were losing these skirmishes, but remember where they were fighting around their own shrine. They they fought away from their own objectives. It's still early game. Your respawns were so low that even though Fnatic had that big advantage, it, at least it felt that way, they only have one tower. And ILTW took the top one. He's had total space. Now he's going to TP in because they're... And you can see Fnatic, no, we actually can't fight anymore. We are not strong enough. And I do believe the Venge just finished a pipe. And he did. They have Battle Fury, Pipe. The, remember, Thompson now will have that defensive pipe aura even after death. That's 10% less magic damage. Yep. the entire side of OG. That's why they're looking for the better initiation. Keep and your eyes smoke. on DJ. They've got the infest. The spirit will clip onto Jirax, but they don't have any vision, no detection around this area. So as the Observe Wall, which also gets dewatered around Roshan, they're starting it. OG are beginning Roshan. They want to see if they can find this kill. DJ is not in position. In fact, he rolling bolt is in. They're looking to get the kill over on Jirax. He's just in range of that sentry ward. So they'll find the kill. And now do they want to keep doing Roshan? Not when the Darkseer wall is planted in and gets a copy over on Thompson. Doom is Get out go. over yes, on the Darkseer. They are looking for the battle, but underneath the tier one tower. Seb eyes it by the rest of his team. That BKB still triggered off, but the Doom is wearing off the Prophet. No tell. He's looking for the kill onto Ice Ice Ice. He wants this Darkseer dead, but he's surrounded by the rest oh, no. of, of the of Fnatic with the fourth man stun. They may actually have enough time while OG are caught sleeping. No time to TP out on the cover of Zone Sprout, but they turn on the Magnetize. The ears will ring oh. of OG apart from Zeb. Doom is back and he is just standing his ground, but he is the last survivor. No, Jirax is here to help him out. I can't believe this is actually a 2 2 trade off. Zeb's the one with the double kills. There's still more to be played with. DJ trying to push away this VS illusion, which is threatening the ES. He will be able to survive. That was huge. Like just that little bit of Thompson continuing to play he bought dj's magnetized because he was afraid of going down that means for this next attempt on roche look at the respawn timers 20 seconds og's mm -hmm. ready to go again you have no wall for a bit you have no magnetize no earth splitter you could theoretically just go straight back into the pit and bear in mind that the longer this game goes the more favorable og's position will be yep. seb if he like he needs to improve his target selection a bit because he was hitting life stealer can't really touch him now but he two shot jabs his elder titan if he guns for him first, OG's gonna shred through these engagements. And that was a four-man stomp. Like, they are catching all of the AoE combo of Fnatic, and it's yep. still an even engagement. Yep. And you were right, it went so quickly. 
I said 2-2, two, two, but it was actually a 3-2. Roshan's begun once more from OG, but ET, he is so fantastic yep, at stopping this, and he's already been spiked Carapel stunned out. Yep, he's just interrupting the stomp. That's all he has to do. Wait, don't catch the spirit. As soon as you see the animation, walk into it with Carapace active. It, you deny ET's ability to combo break, and I expect Jerex to continue to do that. Just a great understanding of his role within this game. But OG is still being more cautious about this. They have ways to close the distance, OG. That Blink Dagger on Tiny, a heavy AoE stun inside of a clustered area like Roshan Pit, giving a combination to the Darkseer, who can also, with the changes, the way you can reposition the wall, it's not as dangerous. Here's your Blink Toss back. They really want to get this kill over on the Doombringer. He has Doom off cooldown in 15 seconds time. That may be too long. Another BKB charge going to be burnt, not to mention the Darkseer wall. More copies being made. So Thompson and Jerex having to deal with the illusions of Ice Ice Ice, while MP moves back to killing off this tier one tower. He wants OG to not have this tower, to not have this easy access to Roshan but they haven't done the job yet. Look at the gold gap though. It went from two to five over the last two minutes because ILTW is still just top. Yep. He's just farming and he has a Battle Fury, his PA, no tails bottom. OG have no fear planting Sebathy's towers. If he's threatened, he'll pop BKB. You cannot kill him. And Fnatic continue to invest five heroes. OG able to repel them easily as only three. They just continue to outscale. It almost feels like by starting Roshan and making him a topic that Fnatic was looking at. They've dragged Fnatic all to the mid lane, which has then opened up the side lanes. Oh. So, like, fantastic. Plan has worked. We've just created almost this graviton field in mid that Fnatic just cannot resist. Yep. And you've got two heroes on OG, three really, if you count tops. And just, again, I really enjoy when he goes this triple Wraith Band into Vlad's because it's so stat efficient. And it goes back to that whole idea of being, you, you can keep items like this in your slots for so much longer because you don't have to worry about carrying the teleport. So it's just an extra Wraith Band of stats you get for free, thanks to the, the frog. And you're, at this point, if you look at the gold he has spent for the respective value his hero gets out of the items he's purchased, mm -hmm. it's, it's as efficient as possible. And when everyone on OG does this, with the exception of, of course, ILTW rushing Battle Fury, they're able to take fights that maybe they shouldn't while still not damaging their ability to build economy. 6k gold lead. It's going to continue to grow by a thousand or two every couple of minutes. And Fnatic need to find an answer, because if, yeah. if this keeps happening, the way, you, the way you're talking about it, it's like a slow bleed mm -hmm. against Fnatic, and they don't have a really easy way. Like, there's, there's, there's a band-aid which just run five together, and that's it. See, Doom's got a relic. He'll have Radiant <laughs> soon. Yep. You know, all, and now he picks up... Uh, oh, I thought he was going to switch Icicle, but I like keeping the wolf. You have to play flawlessly right now as Fnatic. You need Ice 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 to get illusions of Venge and Doom, just so you can have these items. Because you're so far behind, your only real hope to win big team fights is to actually steal the or items that they've picked up for your own side. Does, is, does Doom not have enough money going for the 150 devour bonus gold talent over Dude. like evasion? If, if he's the man on the front lines taking this battle, there's no way you have an MKB man. built up on Fnatic. You, but... you can buy the evasion with the gold, okay? 150 <laughs> every 40 seconds, okay? In 10, in 10 minutes, what? you can have a butterfly for free if you want. <laughs> butterfly Doombringer. Sure, let's go for it. Fnatic has smoked up once more, looking for their own opportunity. Unfortunately for Fnatic's side, they don't have great information. They're going to deep ward out the Observer of OG, but this gives a little bit of extra information to OG that that is gone. And just look at Seb. Again, it's just playing this perfectly. You have a blurred PA on the downside choke point. He's mm -hmm. ensuring that when the smoke breaks, I'm still not visible. Seb standing on the opposite high ground. They know the smoke is happening, and they put the heroes that can tank that pressure in between the weak. DJ, can he get the solo kill? He went for the plus 40 damage talent. He may just have it to get this kill onto Nortel. And yep, he's silenced up, and the Magnetize will kill Nortel off. Nice solo kill for Nias. He had a little of extra help, however. Darkseer just buffed the crap out of him. Easy. No tells a necro book. Like, yeah. He recognizes I'm just going to be farming lanes all game. I don't need to do a damn thing. I, he doesn't even care if he dies, really. It's just more and more space. I think Chaps realized it too, though. Like, when this when this smoke gank didn't work in mid, he instantly drew lines on both of the side lanes, saying, This is pushing in. We have to be able to deal with this. We can't just stand guard around Roshan. This is Fnatic. Send your courier. It'll do the yep. job for you. And, and you know, the, this is kind of what's been holding Fnatic back, I feel, as a team. Like, squads like OG. Like, this is a TI winner. This is a tier one team, at least strategically right now. Mm -hmm. Fnatic, they're still 10th picking a tiny. I just don't know if this is something that will allow you to finally start taking games off of these teams that are just more developed than you. It could just, 
it doesn't feel like they have a real answer to what OG is attempting to do here just because they can't deal enough damage. And look at the way Nortel plays this. Two observer wars being planted down. Want to break the tree. They're going to be able to cancel off his TP out. Question is, will Fnatic work out what happened? Yeah, they're yeah. picking out, <laughs> but they may not see the other ward. He jumped in under the cover of smoke and planted a ward inside the lane. And the sentry, yeah, it's up on the hill. It's not behind the tower, and they've got a full duration observe ward out there already. A lot of information for OG. And all of the items they're buying are based on uh, only BKB in terms... Oh, and three braces on Jerex, man. They're literally just going 25 minute rune fight. VS actually swapping it in. Uh -oh. MP wants to kill him off. Thompson may be regretting this decision. The storm is out and the ET splitter. Not to mention the Dark Seal wall. Seb will trigger the BKB looking for the target. He gets the Doom onto Ice, Ice, Ice. Then we're back underneath the shrine trying to protect up the Dark Seer. Is there a buyback? There is one from the ES and Dark Seer still alive. The Avalanche grains space. Jerex will finally move over as Ice, Ice, Ice will fall. But MP is a double kill. They had so much time in the dust reveal. They want the assassin but really, they want the Doombringer. Arbet, he can't bling forward. He can't get jabs in there. They don't have enough movement speed. MP can still get the triple kill, but Seb will be able to walk it off. There's no Shrine Charge for him. Arbet's not finished with this. He jumps in. He'll get the Avalanche and the toss. He finds the kill. What a huge streak. 1,356 oh gold for the kill on the Doombringer. That, that is one rich Satan. Yeah, the, they have, OG's got to prioritize better killing off these Darkseer illusions. There was a, an unfriendly Doom just fighting against them that entire time. That Radiance represents 17% less physical damage in addition to, of course, the Radiance burn. And mm -hmm. Jerex just isn't strong enough to stand in these fights. The OG support's too weak to really get things done just yet. And because if they lose Roshan, like they're rolling, bouldering in. There's not a lot of damage from Fnatic, but they had so much space created because so many players of OG went down. The Fnatic are the ones to claim it. They even left a quarter staff sitting inside the pit. Yeah, MP, you may want to pick but that up. Remember, OG wanted that fight. That was an aggro swap from Thompson, mm -hmm. but he puts, placed himself in such a poor position that he just dies immediately. Really didn't get a chance to get any spells off even. Just, just died. Then fighting in that area as OG, yep. look at the Fnatic lineup. They need you to clump together to hit these big spell combos, yep. and you walk up the tightest choke point that exists on the map. I don't think we've also seen such a, a useful use of the new, like, angled Darkseer wall. Like, he, he put it over the rune and then up the ramp, so no matter how they want to play this left to right, they had no choice but to continuously walk through it. More and more illusions, the same thing happened behind the tier one tower at the mid. Yep. It's not just a buff up, he's not just a, like a grease for the team. Ice, Ice, Ice is being such a presence in this. And yeah, copying the Doombringer, as you said, it's something that OG cannot allow to happen. But as you said, this is a TI winning team. They're gonna pull their heads in. Focus up while Abed may be potentially finding his own kill, but he needs friends. There's a BKB over on this PA, maybe they can burn that. Avalanche toss up. There's the BKB burner, and he'll just TP out straight away. The ET split up. Nope. That'll cancel the TP. It pierces that immunity. Now, Phantom Assassin needs to have Seb nearby to get the Phantom Strike over. Gets him away from the stomp. They thought maybe he went invis, by, judging by the dust trigger and the tree clearance. Yeah, really well played by Seb there, ensuring his friendly PA can get out of dodge. Finishes a Blink Dagger as well, so their initiation will have a much easier time now. Instead of looking for a swap, Seb can just go try and find that Doom on the Darkseer, who, if, if you Doom Darkseer pre-wall, that's the tools, that's what OG needs to win this engagement. Mm -hmm. That's huge. It went, it came out in that fight, but it already had time to back wall and pop mech. It's just not enough. I should totally take back what I said before about no MKB building on the live stealer. Uh, it was yeah. 15 minutes ago, but correct the mistake. He already has the MKB up and running. Fantastic against PA, and my God, it was needed, and against the Radiance. That equal, like, all of a sudden, you know, the new PA, or well, the new life stealer doesn't have that same really poor relationship against the PA that he did in the previous patches. Just because Midas is now a staple part of your build, so you're going to continue to outscale even though, or scale evenly, even though you don't have the battle fury. He's hitting real hard. And you got a question now, Seb? Yeah, sure. He's so far ahead of the game, but it's getting to the point where you're like, oh, that's a doom though. Yeah. Is this as valuable as we thought it was? He's going to finish a Shiva's eventually. As long as he's walking but. around with the aura, right? Like, it's it's still the buff up of the heavy damage. 
just almost feel like Thompson needs to be able to stand and be something more in these fights, not that swap into, well, oh my god, we need to save Thompson moment. Yep. And the BKB will help him on that front, but it's still taking time. Like he's got so much, like he's got 280 damage standing where he is right now next next to the Doombringer. That's fantastic if he can be immune. And that's where the Darkseer comes in, the Fnatic lineup. You have E.T. going oh, again. Magic Missile is out. Darkseer, well, he's just going to create a wall. A new Vengeful Spirit, swap him back in again. Actually pulls him away from the kick of the rock. And they don't really want to fight this, or nice. do they? they? Okay, swaps away. He swapped the Nyx in with Carapace active, so once again, that blocks the stomp. They, but, if they can continue to do that, that's huge. They're now going to bring the Venger, though. Like, you got a copy of this illusion for 23 seconds with the creep wave coming in. Fnatic now want to actually push the tier 2 tower, but oh, maybe the they won't shrine. have enough time because we've got up on top lane, the TV, the shrine, with the infest combo. Arbed trying to get the kill on Seb, another BKB charge being burned. He's out of 6 seconds on this, and oh, the easy splitter and stop. Jirak's actually going to hit so hard, but ILTW, now he's got no open space. The Doom is on the ice, ice, ice. ILTW wants to find this kick pickoff. He's able to do so with the help of No Tell around the corner. Arbed trapped inside the sprout, the ghost of the means, ILTW. He can't finish the fight, but DJ doing work against Nortel. The Ninja's Prophet will fall in Arbed. The BKB is worn off for the PA, so we can move forward with MP, beating him down in that top lane. The never-ending avalanche stun is pebble on pebble into a landslide. Topsy can at least try and outmaneuver this. Run further down, but they got the rolling ball, the, the movement from Fnatic. They don't need big abilities when they've got such maneuverability. Goodbye, MP gets a double kill and is now godlike. The first lead Fnatic's had in this game since about the four minute mark. Just another poor engagement from OG, and th the Necro book makes sense the way No Tail was playing the game, but if he's gonna look to get involved in these engagements, imagine what a Force Staff could do for his side. He ports in, like he's dead. If Life Stealer, if Earth Spirit, if Tiny, if anyone wants to just kill No Tail, they're f they can feel free to do so because he has no real defensive capabilities, and MP is just going off. 15, 1, and 12. Talking about DJ's game. He's been resp Radiance, Man, he's just hitting tower now too. And Seb, like, mm -hmm. he reinitiated, but he was already at like one third HP. Oh, MP's actually oh he's taken the tier three. <laughs> he's he's actually got the tier three tower. There was no defense from OG. Jirax went on a rune hunt. But this opens up the Shrine Step. He really wants to try and find this kill. Rage off cooldown in two seconds time. He's out of mana, however. So this should be a kill. In fact, it will be no time claiming it. There may be a rebuttal from Arbet. Attempt to be. I think the Sentry Ward. Oh, he no. thinks he's in this, but he's actually not. Jirax, he doesn't hit the stun, but Seb, he'll be to follow up with the slow. Arbet, slap down. Do they have the damage to get the kill? Then they will. No TP out from this one. Arbet wants a revenge on No Tell. The Avalanche will allow that to happen. But man, that trade off, he's dead for a long time. 80 seconds on the sideline. Oh my god, they, they just equalized. You're going to have to buy back here if you want to defend your racks. You can see this is the danger of OG's lineup. Yeah, sure, Fnatic, you can continue to win these team fights, especially if OG misinitiates. Mm -hmm. But as far as raw damage output goes, if the three cores of OG are nearby and able to hit that same target, he will explode. And look at this. Oh, that's a swap. nice ops. It's on the end of Blink. It's actually going to be a jump forward in from Thompson, canceling DJ, the rolling boulder out. But now we've got Darkseer Illusions. And, well, you're now going to hold the high ground. He's just summoned his own army into a stomp. A good Blink away from ILTW. Gets him out of range of that stomp of ET. But OG disengage. They cannot push high ground during this 80 second death time that Tiny granted them. But the, this is huge because you have a Doom. You don't even necessarily need to Doom the Lifestealer. Let's say you just get a favorable engagement off the backs of the Darkseer death. If you can kill MP now, you'll have nearly two minutes of a four on five. And Lifestealer is really the sole source of raw, sustained damage output in these engagements, along with the Darkseer illusions. And shout out to No Tail. I, uh, not just Fada can break records. <laughs> I love how this crowd is applauding the death of No Tail. Thank you very much, Katowice. What a happy, happy crowd. <laughs> That's the advanced analytics that we've come to count on. He's been everywhere, man. He's been everywhere. OG. Now it's their turn to get aggressive, but oh, for now. Again, they are choke there. Point. They are ready. They're looking to jump in. Look for the stun. Arbed isolated inside the sprout. ILTW is taking so much damage. The ET split up. OG pretty well defended oh that God. one. And already the life stealer. He was doomed up by the DEVIL. And he'll go down so quickly. Arbed trapped in again. ILTW has a triple kill. Fnatic have three players. All players push.
pushing up the daisies, and three of them will remain manure. They cannot buy back into this game. You know what was all about that fight, Toby? No wall. The wall was still on cooldown. I'm questioning, holy crap, like, why is OG walking up another high ground? But they have an understanding that they just won't lose this fight. Here it is again. Like, the VAT comes out, but there's no follow-up. And you can see, Fnatic, they have no idea what to do here. The Doom comes out on Lifestealer. He can't rage. Look at him. Watch him die. Yep. There's that damage output. There's that aura combination. Fnatic with no answer whatsoever. And because they're dead, in the world of the live, they still are in the same position. Are they pinging out to go for tier 4 towers? I think they're trying to force out buybacks from Fnatic by at least threatening the position of the tier 4 yeah. towers. They will claim the top melee rack, so a guaranteed raxing. Instant pressure shifted to the mid. Yeah, and you know why it looked like Lifestealer exploded? Because that attack from ILTW was on the Elder Titan that had tanked the Venge W. He was at zero armor. The cleave damage ignores armor value, but not armor type. Effectively, it means he did pure physical damage on that crit, and all of a sudden, your half-HP Lifestealer is in the grave with no buyback. Roche respawning in six seconds. A favorable spawn for OG. They're collecting all the bounty runes, and what wasn't even game is suddenly about to be a 20,000 net worth advantage. Yeah, right off, we look at how much gold swung for the bounty runes. Bring up the graphs. There is the vertical <laughs> climb. It is an Everest for OG. Experience does the same type of thing. Fnatic, they actually had the lead in experience, but it swings up yep. by almost 20,000. Admittedly, I counted Fnatic out way too early, but the danger of this OG lineup is if you lose one fight, you have lost the game, especially at this stage. It's not lucky number 13 on the board for no tail. As the push. Fnatic, they come out once again, but they'll come out underneath Observer Wards. They're here to try and get rid of any vision that OG have, because it's the last lane. This is what they need to control. The vision game on the southern border, and they may even find a target, but it's OG finding it. Is there a rebuttal? The stuns are out. Ice, ice, ice. This wall needs to come down. Has he actually got it? He's duking around. Ice, ice, survive. PA. The AOC moment will crack. They want to re-engage. Here comes your Dark Seal wall up and running. They get a couple of copies. The stuns, they just keep chaining out. Arbed, now going to be broken free. Tops up the BKP. That crit from ILTW, jabs oh. him the lead with a three-man stun! Jerax, the master of the earth, and he'll actually get even more fanatic. They're all down for the count, and GG well played. OG, the swingers of Dota. It, the, at the end of the day, Fnatic have to play better than OG the entire game if they want to close this out. That's that's the OG style. <laughs> they they they, they probably don't even believe how easy that was because they just walked up a high ground and realized, oh shit, we just killed everyone and it's all on the back. I hope we get a slow-mo replay from our panel on that one crit on the ET that uh -huh. just executed the Lifestealer of MP, who played a phenomenal game, but you got one mistake. He dies killing the Tier 3, has to buy back. Yep. Man, that's... That's rough if you're fanatic, and as you said, OG, they, they come out laughing. That's a huge grin on No-Town's face as he just stood up from his chair and go, you know what, I think that was actually a pretty great moment, a pretty great game one. Can't wait to see what game two is going to look like when both these teams keep it so close and so exciting. Well, uh, hope you got your breath back after that one. Uh, what a game. I don't, I don't know where we start, actually. Uh, do you know where we start, actually? We'll ask the three experts. I can just sit back and listen to them. Uh, and it has fogged and Blitz alongside me. Um, gents, uh, you, where do you want to start first? Uh, well, there's a certain handsome gentleman behind me that I just saw on yeah. that screen that played it a pretty, pretty, well on pretty good game. Yeah, he yeah, had a couple. He had a pretty good game. He had a couple dooms where he did get the doom on the Darkseer after he did get his spells off, but for the most part in that game, this was the man they rallied around. Yes. Um, am I crazy or should Fnatic have won this game? Uh, I think maybe I, they had opportunities. Yep. I just don't think, I don't think it was an easy game for them to win. Definitely like, wasn't easy. I think that um, like the lineup that usually has the better draft usually just has more chances. Mm. Like you can mess up still win the game, that usually signals to me that your draft was pretty well constructed. Yep. And it felt like anyways that um, Fnatic, I mean, the single core lifestealer essentially makes this yes. game kind of hard. It kept, it kept them in the game, didn't it? It did, but I feel like he needed like a little bit more backup. Yeah. He did make a bit of an error when he went by himself mid. My point though, Will, is, is if you take him out of the game, this is a straightforward game. Yeah. It's an easy game. I think so. Yeah. Alan, you said halfway through this game, 
Um, if OG lose this, then they definitely haven't got a plan B. But I think this is, again, it's just astonishing to me when we spend all the time building up the narratives for the series, how that narrative played out in such a crazy way in the first game. This was the first time since TI, I think, that I've seen OG take a real gut punch in this game multiple times and come Still back to come win. Back, yeah. They were down 17 to 6 yep. in kills before the 14 minute mark in this game. All of a sudden, though, that Venge Vlads comes online. He gets the Alpha Wolf aura on that Doom, and it was like the switch flipped. And through the mid game, OG felt like they had this incredible momentum. Ice 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 comes back with the Darks here, has great walls, uses that Doom's farm against him. 25 minutes in, this Doom had 16.6k net worth. That's the third highest on the hero in nearly, in about 2,500 games since CI5. Seb has three times in this tournament, on the Core Prophet yesterday, a Beastmaster before that, and then on this Doom, just farmed OG to victory, and still Fnatic were able to make a game of this with some great late game team fights. I, I've, I must have read, read it too much. I thought he was terrible. <laughs> I thought he was supposed to be replaced. No, but like it was 17 to six in that game, but yeah. the gold the gold was never, on the OG side, right? Exactly. It was like map, just, but it was enough, wasn't yeah. it? They did a good job of doing that. And this yeah. mid, I mean, the mid venge was weird because it's like, it's not like Topson was like, wow, Topson played an amazing game. No, he was just like this walking aura mm. that he would just enable the PA to just do that much more damage. And it was, I mean, it's kind of interesting when you're playing with the PA that can just win the game at the late game by himself. Sure, why not just buff buff her up and make her that much stronger? I really wanted to pick your brain about approach. that though because I I think. We were looking at this game like 12 minutes in, and it was like mid venge lull. Yeah, and, I mean, and all of a sudden, it, it felt like the coordinated power spike that they got when they got this aura strat online was like, damn. It wasn't about the. It wasn't really about like him dominating the lane or anything. Mm -hmm. He did fine in the lane. He went zero four four, so it's not like he's trying to kill anybody. No, he's just trying to get some last hits yeah. and levels until he works with his team. Hasn't that been typical of the way that they've played this tournament? They've had someone in the game plodding along pulling people in to kill them or try and attack them while someone else does something else on the rest of the map that's either farming heavy or getting ahead or doing some... It's what they've been doing the whole tournament. Yeah, just this time was with a hero that we haven't seen yeah. much. I think Topson, I think he didn't, he plays a lot of random heroes in his pubs and stuff, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, they haven't played, they, they've played this once since TI. Amazing. Uh, right, let's catch up with Purge and find out what the main man has at the weatherboard. Hey guys, uh, it definitely was an interesting game to watch, mainly because of the fact that OG was so far behind in kills. Their turn lane, they ended up dying a lot, but the benefit was that it kept the enemy cores pretty busy. And in the meantime, Topson could just AFK hit creeps, and Doom got super far ahead in terms of his Midas and uh, being able to max out Devour first so that he could get in a lot of gold. Most of the early fights went pretty bad for them. It just ended up with tower kills, basically. But on the bright side, on the other side of the map, Topson's hitting neutrals, and everybody on OG is getting value from any agility or primary stat attribute that they purchase, because then the aura from the uh, from the Venge and from the Doom ends up being better. They did have some decent fights, and what we really saw out of it was just the value of those early skill points. Now, what often OG did was they ended up dooming Darkseer in these early fights. And it was for Good reason. All the, these aura benefits that we we're talking about would be amplified if you can make illusions of those corresponding heroes. So if they were able to successfully doom Darkseer, a lot of times they were able to win the fight with that, especially because of the auras and, most importantly, the minus armor or, or uh, wave of terror from Venge. All of those things together make for a, a really commanding team fight. And even when they were about to win the game, the game was still really close. It was only a 4k advantage here when they won their uh, team fight. We have a, a, some visuals from their perspective here. Smoking, running to the high ground. They had no vision of their opponents, the smoke broke, and all of a sudden the whole team fight breaks out. Now for Fnatic, it's a, an equal problem, because they weren't necessarily expecting this either. They did have all their heroes here though, and luckily as they initiated, the big difference maker was actually that Doom was able to Doom the lifesteal, and we don't have that very crucial wall of replica from the Darkseer, so they were basically able to focus down on the uh, the lifestealer, preventing his open wounds. But at this point, by the way, he's 15, 2, and 12, has insane KDA. If you watch really slowly, I'll try to play really slowly here. PA ends up getting a crit onto the Elder Titan that splashes and kills the Lifestealer. So that basically just ends the fight. Lifestealer had purchased um, out recently and uh, purchased a, a, a Basher as well. So he was uh, dead at that point. And that's finally when OG won. They just kept smashing their heads against the board until their auras overpowered their enemies.
Mm, thank you very much, uh, Paj. Just uh, you see those little things, mm -hmm. little things. That see how important the game. how important that wall yep. was. It's yeah. like a lot of the situations he like. There's like, like Kevin was saying, he got the doom off on yep. the darkster. A lot of times the darkster did get the wall, but yeah, now he didn't even have yep. the wall. So he's yep. like, all right, I can now doom the life in the fight. Yep. Just easy pickings. Yeah, it's fantastic, and uh, I, I like the the show. We don't always see that wheel from from their perspective. Oh, you no. get their vision. Oh, and, no. then you, and then you see it break at the right time, and it's it's kind of like an illuminating part of the, the thing. We're so spoiled by the fact we just don't have any fog of war at all. <laughs> so we we look at it and go, ah, that looks pretty easy. Yeah, and that's the cool. I think that's the cool thing about Dota. Like uh, when you were talking about us uh, to us earlier about like pauses and stuff like that, yeah. having to make those split second decisions. Of course, as a spectator, like sometimes we're really critical of players because we always know what's going to happen. Obviously, mm -hmm. we can see it. Like it's a slow motion train wreck about to happen, yeah. but uh, it's a different thing entirely to have to plan it and then make the decisions in the moment how to team fight and stuff like that. Okay. More to come from all three of our panel members after the break, which is where we're heading right now. And it's a well-deserved break for the players as well. God only knows what Fnatic are talking about right now, but they're going to get another chance because it's 1-0 OG. We'll see you shortly. Target, but it's OG finding it. Is there a rebuttal? The stun's around. Ice, ice, ice. This wall needs to come down. Has he actually got it? He's duking around. Ice, ice, survive. PA. The AOC moment will crack. They want to re-engage. Here comes your Dark Seal ball up and running. They get a couple of copies. The stuns, they just keep chaining out. Up and now they'll be broken free. Tops up the BKB. That crit from IOTW. Jazz is going to leave with a three-man stun. Jerax, the master of the earth. And he'll actually get even more. Fanatic, they're all down for the count. And GG will... This arena is about ready to explode. Welcome to ESL1. Let's get this started. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Revenant of the epicenter comes in. Oh, it's a big one as well. Look at this. Stop it. The big game. The black are ready to go. GG.